Hello. This week, Sedger says as well, how could you bring plagues upon a people and simultaneously garner their adoration? As this week's Torah portion relates, that's the story of Moshe and the Egyptians. This week we read, God said to Moshe, I will bring one more plague upon Pyro and Egypt. Afterwards, Pyro will let you go. When he lets you out, he will completely drive you out of Egypt. Now, speak to the people and let them each borrow silver and gold vessels from the Egyptians. God made each Egyptian favor the Jewish people. Even Moshe was highly esteemed in the eyes of Egypt and the eyes of Pyro's servants and the Egyptian people. The fact that the Egyptians loved Moshe and the Jews, even though they were clearly the cause of their troubles, is curious. As explanation for this phenomenon, the Ramban explained that the Egyptians recognized that the blame lay within themselves, not within the Jews or Moshe. They knew that it was their own evil and cruel behavior towards the Jewish people that caused the plagues to occur. The only one not to recognize this was Pyro. The recognition of truth and mistreatment to the Jewish people isn't something we find frequently occurring in Jewish history. As infrequent as it is, it is exactly what the future holds in store for us, as the Rabbim explained about the Messianic era. In the future, the Messianic king will arise and renew the Davidic dynasty, restoring it to its initial sovereignty. He will build the temple and gather, gather the dispersed of Israel. If a king will arise from the house of David who diligently studies the Torah and observes its mitzvot as prescribed by the Torah, just as David his ancestor did, he will comp and compel the Jewish people to walk in the ways of the Torah and rectify the breaches in his observance and fight the wars of God, we may, with assurance, consider him Mashiach. If he succeeds and builds the temple in its place and gathers the dispersed of Israel, he is definitely the Mashiach. The Rambam continued, he will then improve the entire world, motivating all the nations to serve God together. As the prophet said, I will transform the peoples to a pure language, that they will call upon the name of God and serve him with one purpose. When the true messianic king will arise and prove successful, his position becoming exalted and uplifted, they will all return and realize that their ancestors endow them with a false heritage and their prophets and ancestors cause them to err. This doesn't mean that everyone will be Jewish. Rather, in that era, there will be neither famine or war, Envy or competition for good will flow with abundance, and all the delights will be freely available as dust. The occupation of the entire world will be sorely to know God. Recognition of truth, God, and the uniqueness of the Jewish people wasn't a phenomenon only to be witnessed once in Jewish history. In the future, the entire world will come to recognize the greatness of God and the Jewish people. Instead of condemning us, they will admire and support us. May those days come speedily. Shabbat Shalom.